Okay, hello by 100. In this video, I wanted to give a quick clarification about the difference between a one-way or one-factor versus two-way or two-factor ANOVA and how to break scenarios down to try and identify which one of those types of analyses would be best to use. So we'll start here with a one-way ANOVA. So what a one-way ANOVA does, it investigates the effect of one factor or independent variable, and that independent variable is what's broken up into three or more groups. So remember, if you have one independent variable that's broken into two groups, you can do a t-test, but if that one independent variable is broken into three or more groups, you need to do an ANOVA. So for a one-way ANOVA, you have one independent variable, that independent variable is broken into three different groups, and then you have, you're investigating the effect of that on your one dependent variable. So an example of this, you might be testing the effect of water on plant growth. So in this case, our independent variable would be the amount of water, and the dependent variable that we're measuring is the amount of plant growth. So it might look something like this. You have one plant that's getting, or one group of plants that's getting no water, another group of plants that's getting a little bit of water, and a third group of plants that's getting a lot of water. So again, in this scenario, your one independent variable is the amount of water that plants are getting that's broken into three different groups, no water, medium water, and a large amount of water. And then that dependent variable you're measuring is the amount of plant growth. For a two-way or two-factor ANOVA, the two-factor part comes in because now you're looking at two different factors or independent variables and seeing what the effect of those are on one independent one dependent variable excuse me so if we use this build on the same example now we might want to test both the effect of water and sunlight on plant growth so now we have two different independent variables water and sunlight our dependent variable is still plant growth so this is the scenario we just talked about previously where you have your three different watering groups. Now we might want to also add in that factor of sunlight. So now you might have groups where you have no sunlight, medium sunlight, or a high amount of sunlight. So again, your dependent variable is the same. You're still looking at plant growth, but now you're looking at two different independent variables, water and sunlight, and each of those independent variables is broken up into multiple treatment groups. So when you're looking at scenarios like the ones that you're going to see on the lab activity worksheet this week, what I recommend doing is thinking about what is the independent variable or are there multiple independent variables and what groups are those broken into and what is the dependent variable. So in this scenario, it says researchers were also curious if they should consider advertising directly to fans of each musician, Taylor, Kanye, and Katie, based on the location of those fans, LA versus New York, assuming a normal distribution of keeping up with the Kardashians viewing for all groups, what kind of statistical tests should researchers use to see if there's a difference in viewership between fans of each musician, on the west versus east coasts. So when you're reading these scenarios, I recommend breaking it down. So identify what the independent variable is, or are there multiple independent variables and what the dependent variable is. And I think approaching it that way will help you identify which type of statistical test is most appropriate.